Now throughout this course, we've been building out our new client onboarding process, which is designed to, well, onboard new clients. But onboarding is only the start of a client engagement. Hopefully we'll be doing many projects, sometimes recurring projects for each client. And managing all those client deliverables can get hectic fast. That's why it helps to centralize all of your clients' information and organize which projects are for which clients. Now, storing client information is one thing, but surfacing client information when and where you need it, that makes all the difference. So in this lesson, we'll cover which client information should you store and how to manage your client list and client attributes in Process Kit. We'll cover managing your client deliverable projects and how to associate projects with clients in Process Kit. Then we'll get into automating tasks based on which client the work is being done for. And I'll show you how to use client attributes in conditional logic in Process Kit. So which client information do you really need to store? Do you ever find yourself hunting around for a specific client's information? You know, like you're searching through your email inbox, sifting through past conversations, or you're checking up on a billing invoice to see what they've actually purchased. You're looking up the contract to see if something is in scope or out of scope. You need to get your deliverables for clients done, but not having all of their information right on hand when you need it is really slowing things down and it's really inefficient. This is why you should really have a centralized client list with each client's information all stored in one place. So which pieces of information do you really need to store about each client? Well, start with the things that you will routinely need easy, fast access to. Now this is different for every company, but a few common ones could be the company's name, their website URL, who your primary contact point is and what their contact information is, maybe which service package did they buy from you or what's included in their scope, maybe some technical specs like which web hosting provider that they use, or some notes about how your team needs to handle something a little bit differently for this client's website compared to other clients. So let's see how to store this stuff in Process Kit. In Process Kit, we make clients a first class feature. So to manage your client list, simply go to clients in the navigation, and that takes you here. Now, before we start creating clients, first let's manage the custom attributes that will be saved for each client. We'll manage those attributes here. Now, every client starts with two attributes by default. That's their client name and the client's logo. You can use custom attributes to store any other piece of information that you need. So let's create a few custom attributes now. We'll create an attribute. We'll give this one a label. And since it's just a name, we'll leave the attribute type set to text. Click Create Attribute. Next, let's have an attribute to store the primary contact person's email address. Let's create another attribute for that. And we'll give this one a label. Now, since we'll be storing an email address, let's give it an attribute type of email address. Click Create. Next, let's make sure that we always store the client's website address. We'll add another attribute for that. Give it a label. And this is a website URL, so let's use that attribute type. Create attribute. Now we'll need a way to specify which service plan the client has purchased. And for that, we'll want this to be a selection between a few preset options. So let's create another attribute. We'll give it a label. And let's make this radio options. Now let's add some options. Click Create Attribute. Now we'll add one more attribute, which we'll use as a place to store miscellaneous notes about this client. We'll just call this one Notes. And let's set the attribute type to Rich Text. That would enable us to use all sorts of different formatting or upload videos or images and links and everything. Click Create Attribute. So these are the custom attributes that we've created. And if we want to, we can reorder them by using these options here. We can edit them, we can add more in the future. But for now, I think we're all set to start adding some clients. So let's go ahead and create our first client. We'll click this button. We'll fill in the client's name. And if you have their logo handy, you can upload that and fill in all the rest of the details as you have them. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now.
When you're finished, click Create Client to save it. Now, if you have another client or two, you can go ahead and add additional clients by going back to Clients and clicking New Client again. After you're finished adding several clients, your client list should look something like this. Now, during the lifetime of a client's engagement, you'll likely have many different projects with all sorts of different deliverables for each individual client. Oftentimes, these will be recurring projects, especially if you're offering retainer-based services. So associating your client with all the individual projects that are for that client is essential for keeping things organized and for ensuring that your process can adapt to each individual project depending on which client it's for and their attributes. Now off camera, I went ahead and I created a brand new board called Marketing Campaigns. Let's go into that now. And I also created several campaign projects within this board. Now these are projects that we're doing on behalf of our clients. So naturally we wanna be able to see which campaigns are for which clients. Here's how we can associate each project with a client. I'm gonna open up one of the projects in this board and I'll go to the project settings and click client. Then here I can select any of our clients to associate this project with. And then I'll click associate client. Now that we've associated this client, a new tab appears on the project with the client's name on it. And if we click that, we have all of that client's information right here at our fingertips, and this would be included in any other projects that we've associated with this client. In other words, anytime we're doing work for a client, we don't need to go hunt elsewhere for that client's information. It's always right here at our fingertips. Now I'll back out to the marketing campaigns board and I'm going to associate the rest of these projects with their respective clients. Okay, I've done that. And as you can see, each of these projects now displays the client's name and their logo right here on those cards. So that makes it easy to visually see which projects are for which clients. Now, how can we filter our projects by client? Well, there are two ways to do that. One way is here in the board view, we can go to list mode and filter this list of projects by client using this. We can check off any number of different clients. For now, let's just find all the projects that are for Inatech. And so now we've filtered the list to show only those projects that are for Inatech. We can show all again. The other way is to go over to your clients list and click on an individual client. Here we'll click on Inatech. And if the client has any projects in any boards, then those boards would show up as tabs. So this client has some projects that are campaigns. So it has a campaigns tab, and these are those two projects that are for this client. Associating projects with clients does wonders for keeping things organized. But what if we could take this a step further? What if you could automate your tasks based on which client they're for? Well, with smart processes and conditional logic in Process Kit, you certainly can. So here's an example. Let's say your marketing service offers three different packages, bronze, silver, and gold. When a client has purchased your bronze or silver packages, then your team would default to just creating image-based assets for them. But if your client has upgraded to the gold package, then your team would also create video-based assets for them. Now you could create two versions of your marketing campaign process, you know, one that's supposed to be used for clients on the gold package and another one for everyone else. And then maybe you'd have to have two separate boards to manage those. But now we're talking about a lot of duplication and it's just too much to manage. So here's how we could stick to a single process and manage all of our marketing campaigns in a single board, but have our process automatically adapt based on which service package bronze, silver, or gold that each client purchased. So off camera, I went ahead and I created a new process called Create Marketing Campaign. I'm gonna click into that now. Notice step four is create video-based assets. Now we don't want step four to be used on every marketing campaign project, right? We only want it to be used when we're creating a marketing campaign for a gold level client because only they've paid for that extra part of our service. So let's set that up using a visibility rule. I'm gonna open up step four and go to the automations panel and I'll go to the visibility tab and add a visibility rule. 
This time we'll use the client attribute value as the rule type. For the client attribute, we'll select service plan, and we'll say that this attribute value must contain the word gold. Let's create that rule. So now this step would be hidden by default, and it will show this task if these conditions are met. And the first condition here is that the service plan on the client that is associated with the project must contain the word gold. All right, now let's see this conditional logic work its magic. Now first, just to show you, I'm gonna to go to my clients list and let's look at two of our clients. Dunder Mifflin, they have a service plan set to gold. So they should see that video assets step in the process. If I go back and look at Sterling Cooper, their service plan is set to bronze. So they should not see that step. Okay, let's go to the boards and we'll go to our marketing campaigns. First, let's open up a project that is for Sterling Cooper. I'll open that. And since we didn't automatically preload that process, I'll just manually create that task list now. Okay, now as you can see, it does not have the step in the process to create a video-based assets. That's because the process recognized that this project is for Sterling Cooper, and Sterling Cooper, if we click over to it, has the bronze service plan. So I'll back out to the marketing campaigns board again. And now let's open up a project that's for Dunder Mifflin. Again, this time I'll just create this task list manually. Normally we would do this automatically, but that's okay. Create marketing campaign. And on this project, this one does have the step for creating video-based assets. That's because the process recognized that this project is for Dunder Mifflin. And if we click to look at this client's attributes, we see that the service plan does contain gold. And so that's how the process can automatically adapt to each individual project depending on which client it's for. Perfect. Now all of the organization and automation in the world won't help you very much if you can't see everything from a bird's eye view or find what you need when and where you need it. In the next lesson, we'll cover visibility for your operation.